When I was young, one of my favorite ways to relax is under the vents of an air conditioner. It was the remedy to all of life's problems, as that cold air sinks into your skin from all four sides. Normally, going to a mall during any other season is just a normal excursion. But during the summertime, with their unlimited cold air and jarringly low temperatures, it was the best thing that a 10-year-old me could think of. However, my obsession for air conditioning has gone under my parents' radar, and they decided that enough was enough. Therefore, they implemented harsh AC restrictions of only one hour of usage at a temperature 26 degrees or higher before bed. If there is a way that a 10-year-old's life can fall apart, this can just be the one. But they say, necessity is the mother of invention. I must find new ways to bring cold air into my life to ensure my comfort and, or in the summer times, my survivability. So my brain started tinkering. One morning, I had to get up really early for a swim training session. And for those of you who have similar experiences in an outdoor pool at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know how cold it is. On my way back home, when my teeth had stopped chattering, I suddenly realized, is that all of that cold air just waiting to be harvested? A light bulb lit up beside my head. Next morning, where I would normally scramble and go to school, I woke up with a sense of purpose. I opened the windows and welcomed the cold air into my room. I felt accomplished. But as they say, pride does not go well with success. And right there on the afternoon, when I once again pushed open the door to my room, I realized that my room was a pressure cooker once again. I left the curtains open. Grumbling, I went downstairs. And I just met my mother coming up. She told me that she is going to buy blinds for our kitchen and living areas. I looked at the brilliant afternoon sun casting scorching rays through our large back porch windows into the areas that we'll just use 30 minutes later. And I couldn't have agreed more. After a $100 investment, these areas become pleasant places to be once again. As I matured, I started to realize why is it important to reduce AC usage aside from meeting my parents' strict AC restrictions. Our AC can use up to three kilowatts of power. That's more than all the other appliances that my 10-year-old brain could think of. And some ACs can even use up to five kilowatts. During hot climates, where temperature is generally higher than around 27 degrees Celsius, a AC unit in a typical home could run up to nine hours per day. And if you take the annual total of a home's electricity usage and calculate the daily average, you only get 30 kilowatt hours. Think about the majority of that electricity is actually used by your electricity condi air conditioning power. And all of that power for thousands of homes, has to be generated through the likes of fossil fuel power plants, which, as you know, release greenhouse gases into the air at this very moment. Although in my province, British Columbia, our hydroelectric dams are much more eco-friendlier, they still segregate or even destroy habitats. Furthermore, air conditioning themselves also pose a threat to the environment as well. Conventional coolants such as chlorofluorocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons, you might know them as CFCs and HFCs, they tear up huge holes in the ozone layer. And it's that exact ozone layer that protects us from the harmful radiation from outer space, such as UV radiation. And if we let that through, these kind of high energy rays can cause cancer. And AC itself is a self-reinforcing progress. As you use more AC, you warm the planet even more, which induces more AC usage, and the cycle continues. Of course, I understand that not everyone lives in a city like Vancouver. 
our, my solution might not apply to everyone. In areas such as South America, Southeast Asia, where the tropical climate is present, my solutions will hardly work there. Although the temperature t typically stays below 28 degrees Celsius, the high amount of humidity level actually brings up the temperature felt by the inhabitants inside living spaces by several degrees. And that is intolerable for most people's standards, and AC must be used. But there is an alternative way. That moisture in the air could actually be harnessed to cool down your body temperature at that very moment. Individual fans or centralized vacuum systems can actually take that, moist, that, that moving air, send it across your body, and it will evaporate the moisture that's present on your body, reducing your body heat automatically with simple science. Furthermore, dehumidifiers can directly take away that moisture in the air, right there and right then. To reduce the problem caused by moisture and to reduce that several degrees of extra temperature felt by our inhabitants. And that several degrees of temperature decrease can make a difference in AC usage. And yet, all of these solutions, they take up less energy than what a typical air conditioning unit would. Still, I understand there might be other densely populated areas with bad air quality, where no ventilation would be practical for our health. But the high intense sunlight and the generally high summer temperatures, once again, may cause these areas to use their air conditioning. However, if you imagine all of those particles that's in the air causing the bad air quality at the moment, these particles, they take the sunlight and reflect it. And practically, the temperature you receive on the ground level where everybody lives is not as high as what we have been imagined from the level of sunlight and the subtropical region that most of these areas are included in. Additionally, most of these areas only sometimes experience extreme type temperatures higher than 27 degrees, where air conditioning starts to become necessary for comfort. Otherwise, the only reason that thousands, if not tens of thousands of units of air conditioning is running in these regions is our ingrained habit to do so. At the end, air conditioning is one of the biggest threats to our environment at this very moment. But there's many ways, clever ways, to manage your indoor air quality so air conditioning would not be necessary and the same amount of coldness can be achieved and you will be ensured the same amount of comfort. The question you might be asking is, why should I care? Isn't it better just with the press of a button that cold air can be released right into your living environment? Why should you implement all of these procedures around your living environment and not just go with the simple way? Think about it this way. If you can reduce or even eliminate the AC usage in your home, you could be saving up to 30, if not 40% of your cooling cost. Furthermore, the sterile environment created by air conditioning is not healthy for you with long effects on your health later down the road. There's a deeper level of meaning to all of this. As humans, we have roots in nature, and it doesn't take much materially to appreciate our world's hospitality. Yet, I know there are places in the world where air conditioning becomes necessary to ensure the inhabitants to be able to live in those regions. But there are also many other of us who can take even just one day or two days of a break from our busy AC routine. There's nature out there beyond your windows that are trying to get in, that are trying to let you enjoy its greatness. As I learned years ago, it means a lot to just take one step out of your comfort zone.